Okay, here it is. A lot of you been asking if I was going to do the October 24 papers. I noticed the um, mark scheme was produced, published, or kind of made available last week. I don't know if it was earlier than that. I've noticed um, that there may be some people who have already done this. If you have, um, have a look at my solutions. These are my model answers with an explanation. So in part one, I'm going to go through the multiple choice questions. So if you find it useful, don't forget to like and share it with your friends, whichever country you're in. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you know when I do the follow up parts. Um, I tend to split the uh, exam paper into several parts to make the videos shorter and also to take breaks from the computer in between um, doing other things. Okay, so without further ado, let's throw into the multiple choice papers. This is Unit 4 Physics at Excel International A level, and this was the exam taken in October a few months ago. All right, so section A, um, the first question is, which of the following uh, causes electrons to be released from the filament? And that's just a very, very common multiple choice question. I've noticed it comes up quite often. The answer is thermionic emission. So this is just a knowledge question. There's nothing else you need to, to look at. Yeah, if you don't know that what thermionic emission is, you need to make sure you have it in your revision notes, okay? So basically it's to do with uh, what they call an electron gun, yeah? An electron gun produces a beam of electrons, yeah? For it to be able to make the beam of electrons, they first got to be emitted, and thermionic emission means emitted using heat thermionic, okay? Once they're emitted, they're then accelerated with a positive potential difference. Okay, question two says, which of the following is not the unit of a vector quantity? Well, the first one is kilograms per meter cube, which is density. Well, that's not a vector quantity. Uh, second one is acceleration, which is a vector quantity. Uh, Newtons per coulomb is, uh, is the amount of force on a unit charge. So that's electric field strength, which is a vector quantity. Newton seconds would be impulse, and impulse is equal to a change in momentum, and momentum is a vector quantity. Okay, so the answer is A. Question three, which row shows a fundamental particle in the first column and a non-fundamental particle in the second column? All right, well, non-fundamental uh, non, uh, means that there's, you can't split them into something smaller. So one of the fundamental particles is a lepton. Yeah, you can't split them into something smaller. The most common example is the electron. And uh, quarks are fundamental particles which make up heavier particles. So alpha is two protons, two neutrons, so that's not a fundamental. And a proton is made of quarks. So a proton is made of quarks, so it can't be a fundamental particle. And then non-fundamental, well, electron is a fundamental, and the muon is like a heavier version of an electron, so they, you can't split them into something, something smaller. So these are fundamental, whereas non-fundamental, um, like a neutron made of three quarks, and a meson made of quark and an anti-quark. So the answer is B. It has both columns correct. Um, number four is about an isotope of radon decaying, yeah, and it decays by alpha particles, so you have to write a balanced nuclear equation, and then you've got to work out the missing numbers, yeah, and then work out which is the correct answer. So, if you see what I've done, the top numbers add up, that's the mass number, top numbers are neutrons and protons added together, and the bottom number is the number of protons, so we're looking for 84 protons, so that could be A, or it could be C. So B and D are definitely wrong. And then the neutrons will be the, the top number minus the bottom number. So the answer will be 134. That will be the difference between the two numbers. So the answer is A. Question five, 
an electron is traveling horizontally at velocity v yeah through a magnetic field um, as shown with the arrow so there's the magnetic field and the field is at an angle of 24 degrees to the vertical yes so that's where they've drawn it to they've written that it's not to scale whatever reason they've done that means uh, you don't there's no point in trying to measure angles etc so what's this saying it then says there is a force acting on the electron in the magnetic field yes that's due to um, Fleming's left hand rule uh, the force acting into the page now you can either use F equals BIL sine theta which would be due to a current yeah or you could use F equals BQV sine theta now theta uh, is the angle between the magnetic field and the charged particle or um, the current okay so it's always the angle between them so don't forget that's a fact okay all right so the angle is shown so the angle is not 24 degrees the angle will be uh, 90 minus 24 degrees so it, if you're using one of these equations now you should really use the bottom one so it's bqv where q is equal to the electron charge so they've used e in the answers now if you look at the four answers here so we know the angle should have 66 in it if they've changed the subject of the equation correctly and if you do that you will see that the equation will for v they want you to work out what v is so if you change the subject of the equation to v using bqv change q to e you'll get f on the top so they've all got f on the top and b e sine theta on the bottom but remember theta is 66 not 24 so it should be c or d and then the direction you've got to use fleming's left hand rule remembering that's an electron so it's the opposite of conventional current and if you do it correctly you'll find the answer is d okay you've got to just make sure you know how to use fleming's left hand rule okay over the page question six an electron has a certain amount of kinetic energy they've given you the amount of kinetic energy and then you should be using the uh, equation which is in your formula sheet on the data in the uh, at the back of the sheet so kinetic energy can be written as momentum squared over 2m why are we using this form of the kinetic energy equation because it's a shortcut because they want you to work out which of the following answers gives you the momentum so if you change the equation round make p the subject of the equation yeah which is what i've done here put p squared in first and once you've done that you can show that p will be equal to the square root of 2m multiplied by ek all you've got to then do is put the uh, numbers in mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms um, and so it needs a square root sign so you want a 2 in there and, and the, the bottom two have got the square root sign, so look at those two, and you'll notice the difference between C and D is that they put the charge of an electron in there just to confuse you, and this is the mass of the electron, yeah? And both of them have the correct kinetic energy underneath the square root sign, so the answer is D. Question seven says the trolley collides, a moving trolley collides with the stationary trolley and, uh, trolley and then they move off together frictional forces are negligible it says so that's just to show you that momentum will be conserved uh, and then it says the collision is inelastic yes well if it's inelastic we automatically know the kinetic energy will not be conserved because that only happens in um, elastic collisions which are not very common yes so the answer in the second column the total kinetic energy will not be conserved so it should be B or D, and we know that uh, the total momentum will be conserved, so it should be A or B, so the answer is B. Uh, question 8 is about cyclotrons. Cyclotrons uh, accelerate charged particles to high speeds. Cyclotrons use electric fields and magnetic fields. Which 
statement is not correct. Yeah, so whenever they put in the not, they put it in bold to make sure you've read the question carefully. The first one is correct. The magnetic field is at right angles to the velocity of the particles, yeah? Now the particles actually spiral, yeah? So, because they kind of, uh, as they go faster, they go into um, uh, bigger and bigger circular paths. The magnetic fields in the Ds, yes, there's two Ds in the cyclotron, it's two halves to the circle, if you like, um, keeps the, the particles following circular paths. They're not perfect circular because, as I said to you, they're spirals. So leave that answer to the last and you'll see that they mean um, they mean spiral. The particles are accelerated by electric fields between the Ds. That is correct. Yes, it's between the Ds where they accelerate in terms of their speed and the particles are accelerated by electric fields inside the Ds. No, well, that's incorrect. It's not inside the Ds. Inside the Ds is the magnetic field acting and uh, causing the direction to change uh, to keep them going in circles, ever increasing radius of circles. So really, it's a spiral, so the answer is D. Okay, so uh, cyclotrons and um, linear accelerators come in every exam, either one or the other, or sometimes both. So you really need to know how the cyclotron works, and you really need to know how a linear accelerator works. Question nine, uh, it's about the alpha scattering experiment which was in 1911, I believe, early 20th century, where beams of alpha particles were fired at a thin gold foil, yes? Which of the following conclusions were they able to make from their observations that all of the charge, that's the way, that's the gives away the key, is concentrated in a small volume? Well, that's not true because the electrons are not, uh, there. The, if, if all of the charge was concentrated in a small volume, they would neutralize each other. The electrons go on, are on the outside in the shells, we know that now, and it's the uh, nucleus which is positive. All that at the time they weren't sure if the nucleus was positive or not in 1911. Then part, uh, question B looks like it's the correct answer. Most of the mass of the atom, yeah, well, that's well over 99%, is concentrated in a small volume, yes? most of the mass in the atom. So the key word here is that in the atom, if they're talking about, uh, so remember electrons um, are also part of the atom. Well, oh, that's really part A I was going back to. But uh, question C, let's see if it's wrong. The electrons orbit the center of the atom, that's true. In specific energy levels, that's true, but it's not one of the conclusions from the Rutherford scattering experiment, okay? They're not saying which of the following are true, they're saying, which of the following conclusions were they able to make from the Rutherford scattering experiments from their observations of that particular experiment? And that the part D is wrong because it says there is a nucleus made of protons and neutrons. Well, the neutrons were not discovered until uh, 20 years later. So be careful. You need to know the details of this experiment. It's another very, very common question for Unit 4. You need to know the observations, the equipment they used, and the conclusions they drew from the observations they made. You need to know the details. Remember, what gets you marks in the exams is depth, detail, and clarity. Question 10, the last of the multiple choice questions before we take a break. Break is a proton and an antiproton travel in opposite directions towards each other. Okay, so it's a proton and a neutron. Each one, each particle, has a kinetic uh, energy of 450 giga electron volts. Well, if you want to work out the energy in joules, you've got to multiply the 450 giga electron volts, which is 10 to the 9, by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, to get it into joules. And remember, there's two of them, so you've got to multiply it by two, because each one has that 450 giga electron volts. volts. So if you know the energy um, in joules, it says when the particles annihilate, yeah, when the particles collide, they annihilate and create a particle-antiparticle pair. So that's new mass that's formed. Yes, yeah, so the question's coming on to what they want you to do. It says which of the following expressions 
gives the maximum mass in kilograms, yeah, that the antiparticles um, of the antiparticle produced. Okay, so um, mass is energy over c squared. Yeah, and if you if you get through the answers, you'll know that the energy is at the top. Yeah. 450 times 10 to the 6. Um, two of them. So there you see is the energy that we got from the top. And you divide it by C squared. And you'll get the answer D. Okay. I think I've done that one right. I'll go and double check that afterwards. Because I'm just wondering. It says of the antiparticle produced. Yeah. Because it says they produce a particle antiparticle pair so i just need to make sure there's not a factor of two that could be uh, incorrect i'll go and check that the mark scheme um, before i do the next section and i will let you know in part two if i've made a mistake with the factor of two okay all right well that's it for for the first uh, video i hope you found that useful for this um, most recent unit 4 exam taken in october 2024 if you found it useful give it a like share it with your friends so more people can have a look at it the exam i think for unit 4 is about eight days time so um, make sure you do the questions and then use my answers to improve your understanding okay thanks for watching see you in the next part of the video bye for now